Hey everyone, I'm Joe Brady and we're here today to quickly explore different lighting styles that you can put to use that are going to benefit both you and your clients. Now each lighting style we're going to explore has a very different look and it might be a great way to create a model portfolio that you can use. Now we want to make things run smoothly and efficiently and to do that I'm going to show you some great gear that will make that happen. Now many of you know I'm a big fan of using a light meter and for every studio portrait I do a light meter is really as basic as a camera itself. Now I've got with me today a variation of one of my favorite studio meters the Sekonic L478DR-EL. I know that's a mouthful, but what it means is that this is a 478 with wireless triggering capabilities, and the EL means that it talks directly to Ellen Chrome's wireless communication system. This meter has some cool new features that allow you to adjust power remotely, and that can be real handy when setting up and shaping your lights. You can also set up lights in groups so that you can fire each light individually or all of them at the same time. Now what that means for you is that you can fire, measure, and adjust lights right from your subject's position. No running around the set, no raising lights up and down, and completely disrupting the flow of the shoot. Simply choose the group that you've chosen for each light and fire it right from the meter. Now I mentioned that this meter was designed for use with Ellen Chrome lights. Ellen Chrome has provided us with lights to take advantage of, so we're going to use that to see how this combination of gear can be such a great benefit in the studio. Now, all that said, if you have a different light meter and different lights, everything we're going to explore today will work for you with just a little more manual labor. Of course, you're going to have to adjust your light's power settings manually at the light, but the light shapers, placement, and metering values will remain the same. We're going to create four different lighting styles with a variety of uses. I know that each of these styles probably deserves a program of its own to fully explore all the possibilities, but this can be a good starting point. This introduction will give you a base on which you can build as you find your own favorite lighting styles. See what happens as you change the position and power of each light and you'll get a better understanding on how light shapes your subject. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started. So this is our classic portrait set. This is something every photographer should offer and it's something you really need to learn to master. But we've got four lights on the set, so let's take a look and see what we've got here. First is our main light. I'm using a three by four foot softbox over here. This is the light that you need to master first. It's got to be perfect because every other light is gonna be measured off of what your main is doing. So this is gonna be short lighting our subject. Our camera direction is coming from here. The camera's right over here. So this is lighting the short side of the face away from the camera. After my main light with this big softbox, I've got a one by three strip softbox right here. This is gonna act as a fill. So it's going to be from one to two to three stops under what my main is. And this is going to allow us to have a nice soft transition from bright to shadow as the light moves across the face. Our third light is right over here behind me. This is a combination kicker separation light and a hair light. What this is going to do is add a little splash of light across the back shoulder and across the back of the head opposite the main light. That's going to allow us to separate our subject from the background. And then our last light is down here on the floor. This is going to be our background light. And what we've done is put a blue gel on it to add a splash of color to this gray background. And the real beauty is with this Sekonic meter, I can measure each of these lights individually, I can fire them, and then I can get my full reading that I'm gonna be able to use in the camera to get perfect results every time. And by the way, it's a good idea to get a preliminary set of measurements before you have your subject come on the set so that things move smoothly and quickly. So let's get our lights measured and then we'll get Kendra on the set and start shooting. So we've got Kendra on the set. Kendra has worked with me before, so she's not too afraid of me. Uh, we're going to use four lights for this particular set. This is going to be our standard portrait lighting set. And it's again, it's important that we get our main light first. So the way I've got my lights grouped is group one for the main, two for the fill, three for the kicker, and then four for the background light. Also with the main, you might notice that I'm not pointing it right at her. My main light's actually coming through here. This is called feathering the light. What this allows me to do is to get a little bit more of the main light coming around her face by having it out here and shooting past her. But again, as I mentioned, it's important that you get the main light correct. So let's go ahead and measure that. I've got it on group one. The dome is out because it doesn't matter. I'm only gonna shoot the one light. So I point back to the main 
hit the measurement button and my main is at F10. So I need to add 3 tenths of a stop to that. I just hit the plus button three times, the light resets, take a reading again, and look at that, what did I get? F11. So my main light is now at F11. So I've got my fill here, this is on group two, I get my reading, I get F7. I want to bring it up to about F8, so I'm just going to plus 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 that to get my light to go up, and I'm at F8. See how easy this is? I don't have to walk around the set, I just tell the meter raise or lower the power. It's a really great handy item to have. Now I'm on group three. I want to measure my kicker separation light. Since Kendra has blonde hair, even though she went to the beach in Florida last week and got really tan, her hair is light. So I want her kicker, her hair light, to be about a stop, a stop and a third under the main. Because if not, it's going to be a little too bright. So that is on group three. So this was on F11. I probably want this kicker to be 6.3 to F7. So I'll do that. I've got F7. That's probably fine. I'm going to drop it down one more third to 6.3. So again, just do that on the meter, get my reading, and look at that 6.3. Lastly, I've got my background light. Probably 5.6 to 6.3 is going to be a good number on that. So I put group four, which is my background, come back here, get my reading. I'm at F5. I'm going to bring it up a third of a stop. Let's see if we can get 5.6. Take another reading, and there we go, five, six, perfect. F11, F8 on our fill, six, three on our kicker, and five, six on our background light. We're ready to shoot. And the one thing I will vary to get a little bit more ratio is my ratio of my main to my fill light. I'm gonna leave my main at F11, that's gonna stay there. The fill light, however, is just one stop under. That's a two to one lighting ratio. I want to see as much as eight to one. So I'm going to go two to one, four to one, which I'll accomplish just by dropping down the fill one stop, eight to one by dropping it down three stops. So last thing I need to do, remember these lights are contributing. I've got a light here and her fill light both hitting her face. So I need to turn all the lights on just by hitting the all button on the meter and meter back to my camera position and I get F13 to be expected because I've got F11 off my main and F8, which technically is 11 and a half, which is pretty close to 13. Trust the meter, it knows what to do. I put 13 on my camera, I'm done, I'm ready to shoot. You ready to shoot? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. So here we are on our high key set. Now in this case we're doing something a little different. Rather than use a white paper and have to throw a lot of lights on it to make it even, we're using a big soft box. And one of the beauties of being able to adjust the power on a light like this from the meter is, well in this case the light is inside here and it's pointed towards the back. So if I had a regular meter that did not have that capability, I'd have to tear this thing apart, open it up to get into the back, to get to the back of the light to make adjustments. Really annoying with this, I just change the buttons right on the meter. In fact, let's go ahead and meter this light. So I'm gonna point back to the light. So that's number four for us. So I take my meter reading and I'm getting F11. I'm gonna go a little higher than that. I wanna go about F13. So I'm going to bring the light up right from the meter, meter back to the light. And what did we get, Kendra? 13. F13, so we've got F13 here. Perfect, so this is good. Now, this is my main light. I want my main light to be about F11. I want it a little bit under. So let's go ahead and meter for our main, which is our number one light. It's showing F10, so we need to come up a third. So let's do 3 tenths and C. Beautiful, we're at F11. Now, I've also got this small strip here. There's a couple reasons I'm using this. One, because Kendra's wearing a hat, I'm concerned about a shadow being cast by the hat. So I've got this light down below, coming up to this side of her face. I'm gonna start with one stop under. I just want a two to one light ratio, but it will open up the shadows here, and it's gonna also have another cool effect. The way we have it angled here is going to put a little angle of light opposite the catch light that's gonna be created by the main. So we're gonna have a big catch light on this side around 9, 10 o'clock, 
and then opposite this little strip. It's really gonna make the eyes pop. So 13, 11, eight on our lights. Let's turn them all on and meter back to the camera position. See what we get. And we get F13, again expected. Remember we've got an eight and an 11 here that are being added together. This is a very ethereal light look. If I shoot at F13, it is going to be perfectly exposed, but I wanna open it up a little bit more. I'm gonna open up my camera about two thirds of a stop. I'm gonna go 13, 11, probably down to 10. That's going to smooth out the skin even a little more. It's gonna lighten the whites a little more, but since it's only two thirds of a stop, we're not gonna blow out anything on all this white clothing. And having this just a little brighter than our main is going to make it a perfectly clean white background. It's a beautiful look. So we're F13 here. Let's put F10 in our camera. You ready to shoot? I'm ready. Let's do it. So here we are in our first dramatic set. You ready for this, Kendra? I'm ready. All right, we're just gonna use two lights for this. We've got our little one by three strip softbox here that's gonna be our kicker separator hair light. But the star of this is right up here behind me. This is uh, Ellen Chrome's Maxi Light Reflector. Sometimes you might have heard it as a deep reflector or a magnum, but it's the Maxi Light from Ellen Chrome. It's a very focused light. Think of it as a spotlight. And one of the biggest reasons for changing reflectors is how they're going to adjust the fall off from light to dark. Something like this puts down a beam of light and the fall off from light to dark is very dramatic and that will create a very dramatic light pattern. Now, I told Kendra about this, enjoy this while you can. This is the kind of light shaper that's not gonna work once you reach a certain age. You need somebody with very good skin to be able to pull off this kind of lighting. The transition from light to dark is very extreme on these, so it's gonna accentuate every feature in the skin. She can get away with it. I don't know if you wanna see a picture of me with this, but anyway, it's gonna work really well with her and we're gonna be very dramatic. Now, I'm actually gonna move this light up higher because I wanna go almost think street light effect. I've got the strip behind her. I'm gonna have it about two stops under whatever we meter this one at, because I just wanted to add a little bit of light on the back of her and on her hair. Now I'm gonna shoot this one in profile to start. I want Kendra to point towards me, so if you'll just rotate this way. And I'm gonna have her looking up at the light. It's gonna be kind of like this, and it's gonna be coming down and be very structural and almost sculptural on her face. So let's go ahead and get the light set, and we're gonna meter them, we can start shooting. So we've got our high contrast set. I just need to meter my lights so we can get things going. So up to the main light, I'm getting F11. I wanna go a little higher. I'm gonna maybe a third of a stop. Let's go up to F13 and see. There we go, 13. This hair separation light, I don't want it to compete with the main, so I'm gonna have it about two stops under. So we're gonna go down to about 6.3. So let's meter back to that. That's on group two. And I'm on F7, let me bring it down a third of a stop. One, two, three, and six, three. Again, when you have a light up this high, it's a real pain to try to change the power, bringing the light up and down and changing it. This is really the way to go for this kind of set. Now, as far as what I'm gonna put in my camera, this light really isn't contributing all that much. It's just adding a little light in the back of her head. This is the star light. So I'm metering back into the light because I wanna make sure, this is dramatic, I wanna make sure the side of her face, particularly her forehead, that are getting this full light are not gonna be overexposed. This is more of a, a harder look rather than a softer look like we were doing before. So F13, that's what we're gonna put in the camera. And we're gonna do both some close-ups and some full lengths because this type of reflector will have a big fall off as well. So she'll be well lit here, and as it goes down to the floor, it's gonna get very dark. It's gonna be a cool look. If you're gonna use a meter like the 308S, it doesn't have the ability to change the power, but the Skyport trigger on the camera does. So what I can do is just push meter. It's got its waiting mode. I'll put it up in the same position and hit the test button on the Skyport itself. And I get, once F again, F13. Yeah, F13. I'm getting the same reading. Now, if I did not have a Skyport and I was just using regular generic lights, I'd have to lower everything up and down and change the power. 
But with the Skyport, I can also go in right on the controller here and adjust the power levels of each light individually. So it's another option if you don't have the 478 meter. But we do have a 478 meter, so let's use it and let's start our shoot. So here we are in our last set. We've got Kendra in a beautiful gown. You look lovely. And we're gonna do three lights. And one of the cool things about this set is just by turning off this one light, this kicker off to my side here, we can change it from light and airy to kind of a dramatic lighting. Our main light in this case is what Ellen Chrome calls a soft light reflector. The rest of the world knows it as a beauty dish. We've got a grid on it. And what the grid does is it keeps the light very focused. And I'm sure you can even see how it's kind of a spot that is falling off re relatively quickly. And the grid aids in that by keeping the light very directional. Now, because the light is up high and we've got this soft, this soft box over here, I needed to add a little bit more light into her eyes. I wanted to make sure that they weren't under shadow. I also wanted to add a little light under her chin. So for that, we have a third light right over here that has a snoot on it. And a snoot is a conical tube that will keep the light very focused. It also has a grid on it that is gonna keep the light really just right here. And it's just gonna open up the shadows under her chin a little bit and add a little bit more light into her eyes. Probably about two stops under our main, two to three stops under on this fill. This is again, the one we're concerned about. So let's go ahead and measure this one first. And I'm getting F10, that's lovely. Let's see what our fill light over here to the side is. And that's F4, that's good. That's about two and a half, a little more than two and a half stops. And then our grid coming right into her face is coming in at four, five. Four, five, 10, I'm gonna bring this one down a little bit, just to nine, because I wanna maintain about two stops difference. So I'm gonna go back to my group for the main light, F10. I'm gonna bring it down a third. I just wanna get about F9. What's that say? Nine. F9, okay. F9, four, five, and I've already forgotten what this one is. Do you remember? You don't remember, you weren't paying attention. Four, okay, so this is gonna be a little under that one. It's gonna be interesting to see how dramatic the difference is gonna be by turning this light on and off. So let's start with them all, and then we'll turn it on and off. My camera position is gonna be over here. I wanna be able to do close up and full length with her, and this is going to change the whole mood of the picture. I hadn't mentioned this earlier. I'm wearing a black shirt. There's a reason for that. When I'm metering, I don't wanna become an extra reflector to change the light patterns or to add light from different lights. By wearing black, I don't add to the scene. So again, main back two. And since everything is two stops or more under this, it's not adding anything to it. So I'm getting F9 to my main. So F9, you ready? ready. Let's get some shots. So what this set shows you is that you don't have to have a fancy place to go out and shoot, right? We're just, we just used a couple of white walls. We took advantage of the corner because that was gonna add a vertical element to it and cause a different light fall off. We've got some white plexiglass on the floor and just a couple of lights and man, do we get some dramatic stuff. So just think about what it is you want your final image to look like. It really helps if you can visualize that final idea and where you're gonna need to put your lights to make that happen. The meter makes it happen, because there's no guessing. We just take our readings, and we get Kendra's favorite number. 13. 13, yes. Put that in your camera, and it's gonna be perfect. This has been a lot of information in a short amount of time. And as I mentioned at the start, each lighting style we explored is just a starting point that you can build on. I hope you get some ideas that will help you learn to create your own lighting styles. Or perhaps you might have seen something that you can add to your existing lighting kit. I also hope that if you aren't already using a light meter, that you see the importance of learning to shape and measure lights. This is the only way to efficiently accomplish this. 
Having the ability to change the power of lights remotely is also a really cool option. It speeds up time on the set when you're not shooting and that translates into more money for you. I'd like to give a shout out to Ellen Chrome for providing these great lights. If you're looking for studio lighting, make sure to give these units a closer look. And of course, as always, our thanks to Sakonic for making this happen. I can't imagine doing studio portraits without a light meter. For me, it is a must have tool for every portrait shoot I do. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys online again soon. Be well and bye bye.